Knopki. I'm the uh, program specialist on citizen security in uh, section gender-based violence uh, based in IRH, and I am also the uh, coordinator of CSAC. And um, today we have uh, with us uh, Alejandro Alvarez, our team leader uh, on uh, governance and rule of law uh, team in uh, BPX New York. And our colleague Daniela Junis Brandt, a regional advisor based in Zagreb, and uh, who is behind setting up much of this uh, security sector reform platform. Uh, without further ado, and I would like to ask Alejandro to give us his uh, opening remarks and his introduction to this, uh, this webinar, uh, setting the for what we're going to discuss today. Alejandro. We cannot hear you. Yeah, you're on mute. Can you hear me now? Yes, now it's good. Yes. Now it's good? Okay. Okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, this is very sophisticated, <laughs> even for you know, New York headquarters. So. Okay, good morning to everybody. Um, uh, my, uh, my name is uh, Alejandro Alvarez. I uh, am the team leader for the rule of law, justice, um, security, and human rights um, team here in New York in the new uh, BPPS. Uh, I think uh, some of you already uh, know me from from uh, previous uh, you know lives. Um, so I'm very happy to be uh, to be here and uh, to share with you some of the well some ideas on on the platform on the um, uh, that you know is bringing us together uh, today. So um, uh, I'm not sure how much time uh, I have, uh, Ivan. So maybe you can tell me quickly, so I don't go over no, my time. No, um, you have time. So you know, we want to hear your okay. remarks. Okay. Okay. So uh, you know, welcome all of you to um, uh, to the CSAC Regional Security Sector Reform Platform, which is you know a new uh, initiative, a regional initiative, but you know with global uh, implications or you know a, a demand, if you wish, you know that is managed by the uh, Istanbul um, Regional Hub. Uh, so you know the main objective, I understand, you know for for today's um, uh, meeting. Is um, is to share with you, um, uh, you know, those and to have a reflection about the platform, how we can use it. The platform is basically uh, a way, uh, a mechanism to offer uh, quick, effective, and demand-driven uh, support um, to uh, to UNDP country offices, to government through you know country offices uh, on uh, issues related to. Uh, uh, SSR, but in particular on small arms uh, and light weapons control and uh, gender mainstreaming uh, in the security sector. So those are the main uh, issues that, we, that the platform uh, is uh, offering support uh, to. So, well, you know, the important thing I would say is that, um, that you know, even if regional, uh, if, you know, regional uh, birth, if you wish, uh, you know, our interest in UNDP is to make it pl uh, this platform um, actually available to all country offices around the globe and uh, to, you know, governments that require specialized support. It's very, uh, you know, it's not very common to have, you know, such expertise available um, in, uh, um, and actually we always have a lot of trouble to mobilize those uh, very high level uh, technical experts. So we are very happy to have that, and uh, we, uh, you know, uh, in headquarters, we are going to 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 make you know uh, the best uh, uh, that is uh, at our uh, possibilities to make it global. So let me, you know, before going a bit more on the platform, let me uh, share with you some some thoughts about uh, the work on security, uh, because. You know, at the very beginning, for those that, you know, have uh, many years already in the organization, um, you know, actually working on security, you know, it wasn't actually a given for UNDP at, uh, at you know, some years ago. Actually, uh, even at the executive board, 
you know, some years ago, we, we, we heard, well, you know, why UNDP is working on security? Why a development organization is working on security issues? This is a member state's prerogative. This is, you know, so sovereignty. Uh, and, uh, and you are, you know, maybe DPKO can do this work, but, you know, actually why, you know, a development organization uh, is working on those issues? And actually, you know, uh, I, I don't, you know, I think that, you know, UNDP in, uh, entered into the business of security issues because actually, you know, it was part of our normal development business. I mean, you know, being more concrete, actually, in many countries, you know, the high level of violence uh, are, you know, actually undermining the possibilities of people, you know, making their, you know, development choices. I mean, you know, going to work, you know, taking people to, uh, to taking the, ch the children to school. You know, actually, it's very, you know, very dangerous in many countries just going around, you know, in the streets. And, uh, and that was actually affecting uh, the investment that governments were, you know, making in different sectors, you know, privileging actually security issues over other more development or, you know, uh, economically, you know, profitable uh, activities. And on the other side, you know, we also, uh, we also realized that, a, I mean, it's not that we have realized, but you know, also we are. We made the argument that actually, uh, many security uh, uh, forces uh, were actually uh, um, a, a source of instability in many countries. So we we needed to get into uh, into you know a dialogue and working with institutions when um, uh, when working on general governance uh, related topics. So because of the violence and because of the instability and governance related issues, you know, UNDP was actually called more and more to enter into uh, security related issues. So this is a bit the story of, you know, how a development organization got into this business. Um, and, uh, and then, well, you know, we made a way on that. And, you know, as you may know, in, in the last uh, strategic plan, the, the one that uh, is going from uh, 2013 to 2017, 14 to 17, or, you know, or 18, I don't remember anymore. Um, so we do have now a particular output related to uh, security, which is the output 3.5. That says, you know, communities empowered and security sector institutions enabled for increased citizen safety and reduced level of armed violence. So, uh, in a way, what we have, if you wish, for the first time, because, you know, in previous uh, strategic plan, it was, you know, much more, you know, uh, watered down, if you wish, to work in security. We do have, in UNDP, a clear mandate on, well, listen, security sector is your topic. Violence reduction is your topic. It's a development topic, and UNDP needs to deliver on that. And that was actually, uh, as all the, 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 the strategic plan uh, approved by the uh, members of the executive board. So, uh, may, you know, including those that, you know, some years ago were uh, questioning why UNDP was entering into security-related issues. So, well, and you also know that, uh, you know, part of the violence reduction mechanism, you know, was, you know, a big portfolio that was created in UNDP related to small arms and uh, light weapons control, where maybe UNDP, you know, is the, you know, one of the most experienced UN organizations and search, or international organizations overall on how to handle, uh, you know, those, um, those issues. So, um, but important thing as well is to say that, um, that, uh, you know, we are trying to be very careful on how we are talking about security sector. Uh, because, it, unfortunately, and I would say unfortunately because, you know, sometimes, you know, this is very much misleading, you know, the, 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 the term or the, the, uh, yeah, the term of, of security sector reform, you know, links always to institutional reforms, to more institutionally focused kind of approaches. In UNDP, uh, uh, we try to make very much the case that uh, if we help to reform institutions, it's at the end to make people safer, is to reduce violence, is to reduce you know, uh, in, interpersonal violence, intercommunal violence, or in general, you know, to bring people uh, to live their lives in a better way. Um, and I'm saying this because sometimes um, 
the very institutionally driven approaches uh, do not have, because they haven't thought about that at the very beginning, a real impact in people's lives. Uh, and uh, impact in people's lives is, uh, to the best of our knowledge, uh, is to make their lives you know, free of violence or you know, with a violence reduced environment. So I, you know, we are you know, trying to, 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 to be very clear on that. And, and you know, in the strategic plan, there is an indicator, uh, an outcome indicator in the outcome two that relates to reducing violence. Because that means that UNDP, by working on small arms control, by working on gender mainstreaming, uh, uh, on, uh, uh, on security issues, by working on security sector reform, and we're working on rule of law in general as well, you know, our goal still is, and we need to prove it, that we are going to help countries to reduce levels of violence, to reduce murder rates, to reduce interpersonal violence as well. So <clears throat> this is a bit, you know, how we are, you know, if you wish, um, um, framing our, our, our support. And then, you know, also, I, I, I would invite you to, to, to take a look at the um, <coughs> Security Council Resolution 2151 that was approved uh, uh, last year. That actually, uh, uh, for the first time, the Security Council made uh, a resolution out of the security sector reform issues, where also, you know, violence reduction issues are uh, um, taken into account, and actually, you know, as well, all the all the related, you know, comprehensive approaches that you know, all that uh, all people that are in the security sector reform business know very much about. And uh, finally, I think that uh, it's pretty amazing to see that you know, in the in the next uh, you know sustainable development uh, agenda that will be hopefully approved uh, in September this year here in New York. There is, uh, you know, you might know the, the goal 16 on peaceful, uh, on peaceful and just uh, societies. And one of the indicators, one of the targets, actually, is an uh, indicator or target. It's a target. It's a target. Know, yeah, so the number two, uh, the second target, is, um, is about uh, reducing violence. So... Uh, in a way, what is going to happen, not in a way, but what is going to happen is that, you know, the, the leaders of the world are going to agree on an agenda for our next 15 years where they engage to reduce violence across the globe. Uh, because this, is, this agenda is not only for development countries, but it's also, you know, uh, applicable to Sweden or <laughs> to the U.S. Uh, and, and to other countries that are not normal development settings. So, um, and that also will require from the UNDP side that we improve our uh, tools, our offer of technical support to, uh, to uh, I hope that you are still, you know, uh, you see me, right? I'm still on your screen, right? It's All okay, right? Yep. Oh, okay, good. Um, so, I was saying that you know goal 16 and this particular indicator will help us you know actually to um, uh, we you know we we'll, we'll require for NDP that we have better instruments you know a, a, you know a more uh, solid offer uh, to countries on how violence can be reduced uh, and you know security sector reform issues small arms control gen mainstreaming uh, are certainly you know part of our an important part of our offer, uh, but well, goal 16 and the, the next uh, you know development agenda is actually open opening us opening for us you know an important um, an important uh, uh, avenue for future work. So we are not done. <laughs> Um, so let me go to uh, more specific issues related to the platform. So, um, you know, I think that, you know, you are all very much familiar about CSAC. Um, you know, CSAC is, you know, a pretty long-standing uh, regional project, you know, that, you know, was born uh, in support of, you know, small arms and, you know, like weapons. And, and at the very beginning, when we were in BCPR, we were, you know, also supporting this development. I remember, you know, talking about CSAC, you know, you know 
many years ago, and uh, and um, and and I think that you know we uh, we manage and well Ivan and Daniela colleagues you know managed to create um, you know a very solid um, a, a, you know work uh, in service of you know uh, seven countries I think that it is um, you know providing you know high quality services you know for on small arms and like weapons that actually then obviously evolved. Uh, because the demand evolved, the needs, you know, evolved, and 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 CSAC, you know, became, you know, more robust and, if you wish, sophisticated, you know, providing, you know, support in other things, uh, you know, creating networks uh, of people that, you know, could work uh, uh, together, you know, even in different countries. So the line of work on gender mainstreaming in the military and the police, you know, was an important, is an important one. And and I think that you know in UNDP will, we we like to 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 show it as an example of how you know we can uh, make uh, um, women can make progress in their careers in those uh, aspects that are not very uh, women friendly in particular like you know the police and and the military and actually you know the demand evolved as well on a more sophisticated security sector reform kind of you know uh, approaches and demand uh, for which. I think uh, CSAC had a very good idea to create, um, uh, to consolidate the base, the base of you know uh, uh, of technical expertise that was available in the region. To first you know exchange and then now you know to offer it to uh, uh, to all countries. So you know today we have uh, you know 23 small arms and light weapons experts and 26 gender mainstreaming um, experts uh, divided in 14 areas of expertise. And, you know, the majority of them all, all uh, speak English, most speak Bosnian, Croatian, Montenegrin, Serbian, yeah. but also we have experts with, uh, that, speaks, uh, that speak uh, Albanian, Romanian, Russian, French, uh, and Spanish. So Spanish is very important. <laughs> um, so um, no, we are very happy with with this uh, development, and um, and uh, you know we use already you know some of this expertise in other countries, and we are um, and we are committed to do um, uh, to do so. So you know uh, the focus on gender equality in the military and law enforcement authorities, uh, and uh, you know also help us you know UNDP to advance the um, the issues related to Security Council Resolution 1325. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, this is a very important issue that is very, you know, uh, in the debate in many countries and, uh, and the experience of the Southeast um, European countries will be very important for uh, all of us. So, well, you know, this is more or less uh, what I, um, uh, I wanted to say. Um, you know, here in headquarters, you know, we are very much working with, uh, uh, with the Istanbul colleagues. Uh, with Ivan, with Daniela, with uh, um, with Zach, uh, with Shelley, um, and um, and we are uh, very much, you know, counting on this platform uh, to serve uh, your country offices and to serve in general, you know, global uh, endeavors um, in this, you know, exciting and difficult agenda of uh, security and uh, justice. So. You know, you can go to the website and see that you will see that there is, uh, you know, a way where you can, you know, ask for support, um, submit online, uh, you know, request for support. So, well, uh, you know, as I said, you know, CSAC is a very sophisticated platform. <laughs> and, for, uh, yeah, you know, and we will, we will certainly, you know, here in headquarters, you know, um, a support all these uh, developments and try to make it, um, you know, as global as we can. So thank you very much. Alejandro, thank you very much for, uh, for the kind words, but also for mainly putting this into the global context and explaining also, I mean, um, how the work that we have done so far with trying to support further fits within the strategic plan and UNDP's uh, work on development and, you know, kind of a newfound or refound uh, focus on also kind of security issues, including uh, the goal 16 of the SDGs. Um, I would like to now uh, move to uh, a short introduction on our side as well before I pass on to my colleague Daniela, uh, just to tell you a bit more about 
where we, a bit more detail where we're actually coming from and how we set this up and as well what's actually on offer and how you can uh, request any of these uh, these. Uh, experts and the, the solutions that we can uh, help you implement. Um, so I'll give you just a bit of background on uh, on CSAC, uh, although Alejandro already kind of pre- provided a very good introduction, uh, and tell you uh, what we base the roster on. <clears throat> Daniela, can I get the next slide, please? Yes, of course. Uh, hello, Ivan. Yes, I will move on to the slide deck. Um, so... Originally, CSEC was uh, CSEC is a UNDP project uh, which was initiated in 2002 in partnership with what was then the Stability Pact for Southeast Europe, and today is a regional organization called the Regional Cooperation Council. And uh, the mandate it was given at the time was to work on strengthening safety and security of regional cooperation in Southeast Europe. Um, at its origin, it was really dealing only with small arms and light weapons, and it was established as the uh, Regional Implementation Plan on Combating Proliferation of Small Arms and Light Weapons in Southeast Europe's executive arm. So it was there to ensure that the states in the region got the necessary support to execute the plan that they agreed on, and mainly looking at reducing the availability of small arms and light weapons, combating trafficking, uh, reducing incidents from uh, munitions, stockpiling, and generally reducing threats to citizens and uh, armed violence. Uh, in 2009, we initiated work on uh, mainstreaming gender and security sector reform, and I'm, I'm happy to be able to introduce in a few minutes uh, Ms. Verita Galianin from uh, the Federal uh, Police Directorate of uh, Bosnia and Herzegovina, who has uh, been a long-standing partner of ours uh, on this endeavor. We were, at the time, in 2009, asked by the uh, Southeast Europe Police Chiefs Association to help them uh, better integrate the gender equality into policing work in the region by using a regional approach. And as a result, uh, we helped set up and facilitated the work of uh, the Women Police Officers Network, which was um, a really unique uh, mechanism through which gender issues were mainstream into policing policies, and mainly thanks to the work of people like Verica, who have done tremendous work in ensuring that actually gender was taken first as a serious issue that was put on the agenda of police uh, directorates and police forces, that it, uh, serious steps were actually taken not only uh, to move beyond just the numbers game and arguing how many women police officers we have, but to actually look at some of the hidden barriers to the career progression, to look at retention issues, and to look at how do we make policing more gender sensitive in the region. As a result of that, we also then initiated work uh, with armed forces in four countries in the region, again, looking very similarly at, of course, increasing the number of women, but more importantly, increasing the gender sensitization of human resource policies uh, and ensuring that those women that are coming in uh, were actually retained and that they had uh, career prospects and that you know they could fulfill their potentials and therefore make the institutions they work in better servants to the communities. In the basis, you know, the work that we have done in the past has really focused on identifying regional solutions to regional problems and to really work as much as possible with uh, the counterparts and institutions that we have engaged with in identifying the solutions that they think are workable quick win, low cost solutions that they could actually implement in practice. Uh, and this has proven, I think, as a success as well, it will probably tell us in a bit. And another aspect is that really we did everything we did through regional cooperation. We really showed that uh, countries working together both increased confidence, but also could learn from each other and could share this knowledge. And as a basis of this kind of regional cooperation, this whole knowledge sharing information exchange processes that uh, we did, uh, um, we have actually learned a valuable lesson that is that there is enough capacity in many of the countries that we work with that could actually be useful originally what we started with within our own sub-region but actually that we could actually make also available to other regions, other countries, other institutions. Uh, next slide, please. And Alex, could get the next slide? Ah, thank you. No? Uh, so, examples of this, of this kind of knowledge exchange and uh, information sharing is really the um, three uh, regional processes that uh, we currently facilitate. 
uh, on the small arms side, for example. So Firearms Experts Network, which is a very technical uh, working group of experts from police services, customs and judiciaries uh, from seven, uh, seven countries. Uh, meeting regularly, exchanging knowledge through also innovation, in, innovative tools, online tools, etc. Uh, and all in the light of increasing the knowledge, increasing communication, uh, building confidence among those countries with the view of reducing illicit flows of weapons. At the same time, we also use the regional approach to network small arms commissions. So these are bodies that uh, UNDP pretty much uh, developed back in the early 2000s and that we have helped set up in this region. We also wanted to make sure that the work that they did on the ground, the knowledge, the policies that were developed, the implementation of those policies, the problems that we found lessons learned could actually be shared as much as possible and it could be systematized in a way that's useful to other countries. And finally, we worked on arms to exports uh, control uh, transfers through this uh, regional information exchange process Again, stimulating knowledge exchange, uh, uh, information transfers, uh, ensuring that countries could work together to solve uh, problems that they were facing. So this day, we uh, still serve as the secretaries of the Women Police Officers Network, uh, the regional level, and we try to support uh, the female uh, police officers associations that were established in several of the countries uh, by providing them technical assistance. And, of course, we facilitate the uh, network of gender equality mechanisms of the Ministries of Defense and Armed Forces, which, again, is a way for us to ensure that countries work together on promoting gender equality within the armed forces, mainly as a prerequisite to implementing uh, the Security Council Resolution 1325 and Women, Peace and Security. Um, here, our aim is very much to ensure that uh, the armed forces have significant representation of women at policy-making, decision-making uh, uh, levels that could actually ensure that when that they are able to implement uh, national action plans of 1325. So, having come of this, uh, I just want to give you just a brief introduction of where we, uh, where we came from and the type of work that we have been doing. And looking at the range of partners that we have worked in several countries, we identified, together with colleagues from the Istanbul Regional Hub, that this was a significant resource that was built up over a period of some 13 years. And that if we could make it as an offer in a very systematic way, this is experience that could actually be uh, extremely useful to other country officers, to other governments, other institutions that uh, work with, but could also be used as a way of advancing our work on armed violence prevention, on citizen security, on uh, gender equality and security sector reform. And very much we then decided to establish this regional platform uh, based on uh, the niche areas that we're working on, so small arms control and gender mainstream in SSR. Um, and then we reached out to the countries we work with and uh, ensured that the experts that they, uh, we wanted to have on this platform were you know, endorsed also by the countries and we had buy-in. Very, I think the, the most significant part of, of this roster that Daniela will talk about is also the fact that these are people who are actually currently working on these issues. Uh, they, are, you know, they have live experience, but also they have experience in traditional settings, in post-conflict settings, uh, where they have actually implemented change and that we, can, uh, we know the quality of the work uh, and the results they have achieved. So, we offer this primarily as a service to the ECRA region, but actually more broadly to uh, other regions, other country offices that are interested. And we are very, uh, very proud of our association with our colleagues in New York and the, the endorsement we got from Alejandro and his amazing team, uh, and the ability to actually make this something that could be useful to country offices throughout as a south-south or east-east triangle development cooperation mechanism, uh, a way for us to kind of pass the knowledge that was capacitated. Uh, through our work in this region and make it available to the rest of uh, the rest of the globe. So, having said that, um, I would like to now give uh, the floor to my colleague Daniela uh, Junitz, our regional advisor, who uh, worked this year with us uh, to set up this mechanism as such uh, and make it available. So, Daniela. Thank you very much, Ivan. Um, I hope every, everyone can hear me. Um, this is an excellent introduction. I come after Alejandro, 
who gave us the global context and, and even who explained uh, more about where this idea came from. It's an excellent base of more than 10 years of CSEC work in the region. Uh, so I'm very happy, voila, 10 months on to, to show you the screen where we can uh, invite you to visit our website and see more closely for yourself what the platform is about. Um, allow me just shortly to also uh, welcome you to this webinar and also uh, present shortly, just take a few minutes uh, to highlight that I have been seconded to, uh, to CSEC from the Croatian Ministry of Foreign and European Affairs back in October last year with the task to develop the mechanism that we are presenting today. The reason I took time to highlight this is I, I believe this perfectly illustrates the partnership spirit of this project. Um, both within the countries of the, of the Southeast Europe as well as between the countries and the UNDP CSAC. Because the platform has really been conceived from day one and organized hand in hand uh, together with the UNDP CSAC and participating countries in the region. And we, we believe that this same spirit of partnership will continue through the platform's work, uh, both within our region and also beyond our region, as we hope. Now, let me tell you in the presentation more about the platform itself, where we are right now with it, and more importantly, uh, where we would like to go together with all of you. So, this is what you can see on your screens, hopefully, um, is the web page as it looks now. So, you can go on a CSEC website and you can click on the, on the What We Do section where you will find the Regional Security Sector Reform Platform in all details. Um, as well, on this very page, you can simply access the platform uh, and pop a request for assistance or simply start a conversation with us on related uh, SSR issues where we can possibly find the joint solution, even if you don't identify yourself under what we uh, can see as our areas of expertise. Now, what is it that we offer? Um, as you can see, and as you have heard before, both from uh, my dear colleague uh, Ivan and um, Alejandro, uh, we are focusing on small arms and light weapons control and gender mainstreaming in the security sector. And you may wonder why precisely these two areas. Well, as you could hear before, this is where CSEC and participating countries have built a rather unique uh, regional security network. Uh, this is where we are proud to have some good results and some good practice that we felt uh, really could be shared and could be useful as elsewhere. Um, also, these two niche areas, um, what we can see in our region, make a great impact on citizen security and on gender issues. This is exactly what we can see now, UNDP being um, institutionally tasked through strategic plan. This is a clear mandate, and uh, this region uh, has been doing it, and uh, we believe have some good results that we can, and good practice we can share. Um, we are offering a quick and effective and demand-driven short-term, as you can see, targeted technical support. Um, and this is standing on two very solid feet. Uh, one is the CSAC long-standing experience in, in project development and implementation, an excellent team that I'm happy to have joined in the past 10 months, um, as well as what we have built as a regional roster of experts. Um, this is now uh, more than 50 experts from the region. Uh, they have been approved by the participating states, uh, pre-screened, vetted. Um, they have current hands-on experience of national policy. But what is really unique, uh, they all have a UNDP CSAC regional projects and initiatives experience. So these experts really come with a double perspective of national implementation as well as a regional uh, cooperation perspective. And that's, this can be very valuable in many areas of the world. Who are our experts that we're talking about? Um, they are all civil servants, as it was mentioned before. They are active practitioners from different ministries. You can read um, for yourself. Um, and they have been selected um, and, um, and put on a roster. Um, Currently, we have 23 self-control and 27 gender mainstreaming experts, as well as three wider experts who, who cover both areas and some more um, bring some more experience to, the, to our offer. We are very proud to say that we have 27 female and 25 male experts. Given the security um, focus of our platform, this is not the most usual case. 
so we are happy to say that we walk our talk here. Um, the experts are divided into 14 areas of expertise, and not to read all of them, the list is available on the website, as what me was mentioned uh, before. Um, more on our experts, because we can never say enough about them. Um, as you could hear, um, the languages that are available, most of them uh, are fluent in English. Only three have some other combination of languages. Uh, the roster itself you cannot access in its totality. It is based on a secure area of CSEC website. Um, and uh, given you should keep in mind when you think of their deployment, uh, they are all active civil servants, so please consider that uh, they most, uh, most of them indicated some deployment uh, notice for weeks, but we can always go case by case and see uh, what's the request and what's the situation. Um, I can show you just as a visualization what the roster of experts secure web page looks like. Uh, it's 15 different categories of information we have on each of the experts. Uh, what might be of interest to you uh, is that uh, we do have a feature uh, to provide a, a short PDF list of our experts, which is providing information on their current position, on main area of expertise, and the more detailed core expertise, as well as the languages. And this can be provided upon request. Now, not to go and talk any more about the experts, we are very, very happy to have one with us today. Our feature expert, our ambassador for all the experts that we have on the roster, Mrs. Vergitsa Gulianin. Uh, so I would invite the Bosnian um, connection from the UNDP in Sarajevo to unmute their mic, and we hopefully hear from Vergitsa. Thank you very much. Um, uh, we cannot really hear you guys. Can you hear me now? No, it's uh, pretty low. We need a bit more. Okay. Hello? Can yeah. you hear me now? Perfect. Hello? Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, I will start again. <laughs> Good afternoon to everybody. Thank you to Daniela because she introduced me so well. And also to Ivan to uh, invite me to be part of this webinar. I'm really happy for that. Then uh, today I'll try to uh, tell you a little about uh, regional cooperation to Vipon. Uh, this is the uh, Women uh, uh, Police Officers Network, uh, Southeast Europe, and a little bit about my experience in giving lessons to uh, girls police officers uh, in Afghanistan, in Turkey. Uh, then, uh, first of all, I really have uh, to say big thank you for the staff, uh, UNDP C6 staff from Belgrade, for even uh, for Boyana and all the others. They really, really uh, help us a lot, uh, first uh, to Vipun, and after that for our net in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And they're a really, really great team. Uh, then, uh, you know, during uh, 2010, uh, under the umbrella of uh, Southeast Europe Police Chiefs Association, SEPCA, uh, we established the uh, Women Police Officers Network in Southeast Europe. And I have to tell you that it's really helped us to detect the problems that women face in the police forces uh, uh, in all the region and uh, uh, together find the best way how uh, to solve it and uh, how to, to deal with it. Uh, then uh, after that, uh, during our work, uh, we find out that maybe it will be really good that we establish uh, our national network, each country, then that uh, will be easier maybe to recognize our, our own problem, then uh, make uh, uh, some comparison and uh, find out what are the similar problems, what are differences and so on. Uh, then uh, we already have done, uh, we in Bosnia, uh, we established our net uh, in uh, 2012. And uh, uh, I have to tell you that, <laughs> again, without uh, UNDP CISEC staff from the Belgrade, we really we will be on a halfway, I am sure. And thanks for that again. Uh, then uh, that was uh, also uh, uh, some entrance for uh, this, uh, that the uh, UNPC staff from Belgrade uh, called me to be an expert who will give uh, 
some lessons uh, uh, on the gender uh, based uh, to Afghanistan and uh, girls in uh, Turkey uh, in them training center. And I was really excited and uh, really happy that I had this possibility. Uh, and uh, uh, at that time, it was the end of the, uh, 2014. Uh, and I were, was really happy to have this opportunity. And I have to be honest, I also was a little bit afraid. Am I able to do it? And I do my best, and I hope uh, that uh, all is uh, fine. Uh, then, uh, when I go there, uh, you know, a little bit in my presentation I gave them uh, 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 something, uh, some information about the position of women in, in Bosnia and Herzegovina and also in the region. Uh, then after that, uh, I talk about the weapons, I talk about our net, and also about uh, gender-based violence, uh, because we had uh, some projects uh, uh, with the United States government, uh, I mean uh, with the embassy uh, of the United States in uh, Sarajevo, uh, uh, and it's called, this project is called Gender-Based Violence, and I try to transfer them uh, the most important things, and uh, what is, and uh, what are forms of uh, how we fight against, and so on. Uh, then, you know, uh, it was really, really good experience for me. Why? Uh, you know, I don't think so that it's only a benefit for them, because I gave them some lessons. I also gained some, some really good things, because uh, during this discussion, I uh, realized uh, many things that I even don't know about Afghanistan, uh, uh, although I, I try to inform myself a little bit before I go to, to Turkey. Uh, then, you know, we discussed and uh, I find out that anyhow that we are different uh, historically, uh, I don't know, other society and uh, way of the life, that generally uh, police work is similar and uh, we have a similar or the same problem uh, even here or there. And, you know, we discussed many stuff, but uh, uh, what do they ask me? Uh, they ask me about net. Uh, they, they were really interested about that. And I, I find out that, uh, you know, they ask me about technical things, about uh, how to organize, how to establish, uh, what the aims, what the benefits, and so on. And I try to do my best and to explain them about that. Uh, then, you know, and I think that, that uh, benefit is mutual and, and I was really happy to have this opportunity. Uh, then, you know, uh, also I have to note that this uh, was uh, organized, this training was organized by uh, UNDP and the JICA, uh, the Japanese International Cooperation Association. I also had the possibility to talk to staff uh, of JICA and they were really, really happy to, to uh, they said so, to have me as, a, as a, uh, one uh, of uh, a person who gave the lessons. And they said that it's really good opportunity uh, uh, that uh, uh, we transfer, that we exchange information. They even tell to me if they will have a possibility to call me in Japan to, because they don't have, as they told me, they don't have uh, some uh, women police net there. And uh, uh, they also were interested about that. Then, you know, uh, I hope that uh, I, I don't want to take you much time. And I hope that I uh, explain to you that uh, this platform is a really, really good thing. And I hope that we are uh, going on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Verica, uh, for um, joining the presentation. Um, it is the best when we hear real life examples. And uh, as said, Verita has already done uh, what platform uh, aims to do in a more systematic way. Um, the example of training Afghani police uh, uh, women is one of them. And we are happy to inform all of you that, um, as I learned uh, yesterday, that Ministry of Defense of Macedonia and Montenegro are very happy to send two gender trainers uh, to the training in Georgia. Um, which is the most recent story we are looking into. Um, and uh, we can hear more uh, possibly from CSEC team uh, after the presentation. So some of these uh, cases are already happening, what we are trying to do with the platform in a more systematic way. Uh, to go on with the presentation, uh, this uh, fits uh, good with 
how is it actually done um, uh, or how it will be done in, in, uh, in the platform. As you could hear, um, the platform is fully integrated into CSEC, which is uh, uh, recently also an integral part of the Istanbul Regional Hub. Um, it is primarily for now designed to support UNDP countries, country offices. Uh, as well as other UN entities, but we are looking into partnerships with uh, other regional and international organizations, uh, especially looking into the European Union. Um, and as for all of you, uh, you can access the platform in three pretty easy steps. Um, you go to our website, as already mentioned, and you just send an online inquiry. There is a link available on that page. Uh, and you specify uh, the stream of expertise that you're interested in, the type of support, um, and uh, ideally the area of expertise that is listed there. If not, as I said, we are open to start a conversation if you have any other interests that are related to what we uh, work with. Uh, CSEC will aim to respond as soon as possible with the CVs of relevant experts who, who meet your requests. And uh, very important, last but not least, very important, except if otherwise agreed, the cost of deployment of experts will be borne by the requesting entities. Uh, just bear in mind, when we talk about the costs, it is very uh, light bureaucracy, and we hope to be able to mobilize very quickly. Uh, as is agreed with all the participating countries, it is only the travel and DSA that should be um, covered. So thank you for your attention. I would simply invite you to uh, search for yourself on our website and um, and uh, talk to us, uh, get in touch, and start using the platform. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Daniela, and thank you, Veris, of course, for uh, this kind of a brief glimpse into uh, your experience of kind of being actually our first ever deployment, even before we had the uh, platform fully up and running. Uh, I would like to invite now colleagues uh, the webinar to you know ask questions or comments, uh, clarifications, anything that we can uh, help you with. So, um, see there. I don't see any questions at the moment. Um, we have a here from uh, our colleague Zach Taylor, our regional conflict advisor. Uh, good morning and afternoon, colleagues. Um, no, thank you all for your uh, for your very clear presentations, and of course to Alejandro uh, and colleagues for uh, um, for the, the the global view. I just wanted to um, maybe maybe it's a question, maybe it's a comment. I don't know, but um, just to really to basically state the obvious that there are you know clearly a number of uh, there are clearly a number of, of rosters out there. Um, and uh, I, I suppose rosters are only as good as um, uh, the uh, intensity of use and, and the quality of those advisors. You know, we're pretty confident that uh, on this side, the, the quality of the advisors is, is very high. Uh, I think you've just heard that. Um, but um, I just wanted to, to sort of ask, ask colleagues whether or not you know, um, we, can be, we can be confident that the way this roster um, has been explained, that it will work well with those existing rosters out there. Um, I don't know if anyone has any views on that, but certainly we wanted to ensure that this is uh, this is something that is well well integrated already. So, if no one has any views, so I just wanted to just maybe maybe a, maybe a call to to make sure that we we get the feedback um, that we need uh, over here um to make sure that uh you know we are, we're plugged in we're as plugged in as uh, as possible thanks just uh thank you zach just a quick response from me for those who don't know me my name is evelyn i'm part of uh, alejandro's team he had to leave unfortunately um I've had extremely good experience with an expert from uh, from the region uh, in Iraq to help develop a national security strategy. Uh, I think the Croatian experience was very, very much welcomed by the by the Iraqi authorities, and uh, so the experience was overall very good and it was very smooth. This was before uh, before this platform, obviously, and the way we did it is we included uh, this uh, person into our. 
uh, into our roster what used to be PCPR, um, and this is how we recruit it. So in, in terms of your question, Zach, I'm, I don't, I'm not sure how different rosters can align and what would be the quickest operational way, but I think that what I do know is that there's always a high demand for uh, real experts at senior levels in, in all the areas that you've mentioned. So I think it is great to have this this global link to this regional platform as well, because obviously we receive a lot of requests from uh, from everywhere for for different experts. So we can then also eas- more easily reach out to you or refer our offices to the platform. And then operationally, I think we can work it out either directly through that roster or if somehow administratively that is complicated, we can we can find another way. But for us, the primary huge benefit is to have this. Uh, vetted set of uh, of senior experts that you have, which is really uh, which is uh, which is really great. So that's my quick comment. Thank you, Evelyn. Really helpful. Okay, are there um, any comments or questions? Anything that we maybe left unclear? Let me let me stress also that uh, you can, uh, if you want to discuss this further, maybe uh, separately, or if you have uh, you know questions or you want to request deployment, please feel free to get in touch with us. Uh, I think you can see on your screen the the web address on which the roster is available and the mechanism is explained. But also, do feel free to get in touch with myself or uh, colleague Daniela. Um, our contact details are in the original email. Um, so yeah. Okay, there are no, uh, no questions and no further comments. I would like to thank colleagues that uh, joined uh, this webinar. Um, I would like to particularly thank... Uh, yeah. Ivan, so I'm very sorry. I just have one quick question. I'd be curious to know who else is uh, on the line. Okay, of course. We have colleagues in uh, Istanbul Regional Hub. We have colleague uh, Yasin Torovic and colleagues in uh, Bosnia Country Office. Uh, and then colleagues in UNDP Belarus country office. Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. And of course, here uh, we have um, uh, our uh, governance peace building team leader, Shelley Inglis, Zach, who you just heard, and colleagues from the CSAC team as well. Okay. Uh, well, I'd like to uh, thank uh, Veris in particular for her time uh, and uh, for coming to uh, discuss her experience. Also, Alejandro for the introduction and setting this mechanism in this kind of global process uh, and the, the current global uh, strategic outlook. And finally, of course, uh, Daniela for organizing uh, the webinar. I'd like to also thank colleagues for that have attended, and uh, we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you all very much for joining. Thank you. Bye. Bye.